are delusions. What a delusion is the definition of something is in the mental health field that are politically, religiously, or right thereof in opposition of truth, etc. This is being done on my FB once again instead of in video this time, so the public has a very clear image of reality. We are talking about this subject here tonight because of two reasons. The first reason is because my atheistic viewers were puppeteered by my enemies in the Freemasons and the Illuminati, which includes their weapon to neutralize me from commanding the army I am raising. And the power Christ has granted me, the second is because society has been misled and deceived, the whole world lead astray by false notions and accurate information, Machiavellianism, controlled media. And it's so deep into the brain of our societal structures that it is taught to someone by someone who manipulates, deceives, and brainwashes, hypnotizes, and Machiavellianus as that person. Who teaches it to others unknowingly misteaching it, and the subjects who receive the information only know what they are taught and don't think for themselves, and go and misteach more people. So, we need to talk about delusions here. The definition of delusion is the idiosyncratic belief or impression that is firmly maintained despite being contradicted by what is generally accepted as reality or rational argument. So, just by the dictionary definition, one can assess that the definition of delusion is subjective and not objective. For example, let's say a mass of people were hypnotized to believe something that is not true, yet one person in the crowd was not subjected to hypnosis. A mass of hypnotized persons will not be delusional by a dictionary definition, and the one that was not hypnotized will technically be delusional by a dictionary definition. Now, if we look at the reality of the true definition by the linguistic roots, you will find a very different definition of delusion, one that is not subjective, but rather objective. This is the first step in breaking the still society is under it being deceived and misled according to the Bible. No means down the way for sense, the air ate denoting removal or reversal. Illusion means something that looks or seems different from what it is, something that is false or not real, but that seems to be true or real. So, delusion would actually mean the individualistic, internal, mental delusion. A false notion that an individual has inside their mind that is contrary to the outside world of reality. Question, rhetorical, is that more than one person have the exact same delusion? And if so, is that a delusion or is that a reality being covered up on silence? We will continue this subject shortly in another post in the next day or two. There are lots of things we have to get to for the general public here. To get your backwards and confused minds undeceived, and unmistly to get you out of your delusions, and enlighten to reality and the truth. We see that the dictionary definition applied extra applicable notions to the transliteral linguistic roots, twisting the definition from a transliteral meaning for a translation, which changes the meaning of the linguistic roots to something extra applicable in notion. We verify that the true meaning of delusion is that an idea, thought, or belief that someone has inside their head that is not true compared to reality. And we also verify that it is possible for more than one person to have the exact same delusion. And that there are another set of individuals who have a differing belief viewpoint that is the truth. And is being silenced by the greater mass of misled and deceived persons who hold the true delusion. And that just because a majority perceives something a certain way compared an individual does not mean that the individual is delusional just because the person is considered a minority. And that the potential of the majority being delusional is just as statistically likely as a sole individual. In my coursework in mental health subjects, psychology, and philosophy, we learn a great deal about the mind and the modern mental health field. 
In the mental health field, we were trained to assess an individual for mental health-related concerns and symptoms of mental illness. One of the assessments was to ask various and strange questions about the individual, questions like, do you believe in God? Do you believe you have a secret mission from God or Christ? Do angels speak to you? Do you hear or feel or see spirits or other beings, etc., etc., etc.? The list goes on. These questions and procedures we were trained in didn't make much sense to me at the time, but now I see clearly. These mental health questions are asked upon the individual, so they can be diagnosed or assessed for mental health disorders like schizophrenia and others alike. The question one needs to ask themselves is what is schizophrenia really? A mental health disorder is based upon a person's symptoms. So let's say, for example, we have person A, person B, person C, person D, and person E. Person A hears voices and talks to them. Person B says they feel they're being touched inappropriately by an unseen person. Person C says they see invisible people and giants. And person D says they smell smells that aren't there, yet person E can see, hear, smell, feel, yet does not talk back to the voices. Tells no one they can see giants and invisible people, or voices of that smells not there, or tells anyone they feel they're being touched by invisible beings. Person E will not be diagnosed with schizophrenia. Person E is part of the paranormal team and is an active member in church and performs exorcism. He has found that spirits, angels, etc. exist. And realized that the mental health field is intentionally targeting people who become spiritually enlightened, who have contact with spirits, angels, aliens, so that they be silenced and isolated. This is a very real agenda that exists in our world to silence those who have contact with the divine, to silence religious people, to silence Christians. This is a government agenda in the mental health field, which is puppeted through the human right of Freemasonry by the Illuminati. The Freemasons' ultimate goal is to destroy religion, is spoken of in an 1800s Grand Lodge meeting and published in books, which is the same agenda the Illuminati have. Watch those YouTube videos I have made going further in detail on this stuff. The same organization that controls society have misled and deceived the masses, just as the Bible says the whole world has been made astray by the devil, deceived and misled. So, how has this organization misled and deceived society you? The capital of the Illuminati is the Goldman Sachs industry, which is a Jewish family-owned business. Almost every media outlet is controlled here by this one giant conscientious entity. The schools and colleges where we attend and learn are heavily shrouded in this teaching and this education, where these institutions and teachers, professors are teaching you what they were taught to teach. We were taught to teach by another, who was taught by a young bright mason phenomenatus the perception of a reality, delusion by means like earlierism. And false history and misleading news with political propaganda fueling that perception. We will get to the details of the misdeeds, misleadings, and miseducation in the next post. I became spiritually enlightened in 2011. What this is, spiritualists have referred to as becoming criminal luminous, which is the transcending beyond normal human comprehension and perception. No longer controlled by the machine, the deep state conspiracy theory and religious prophecies of the US, France, Italy, European Union, Freemasons, Illuminati, Jews. Able to see the world and reality the way it really is, becoming aware of the truth and existence of God and what exists beyond physical reality, outer space. The other side, heaven, hell, etc. Spiritualists have referred to this time frame prior to the second coming as the golden age of enlightenment and the age of enlightenment. Most of 
Thomas even has a prophecy of this, where he explains that in this time frame many people will become aware and enlightened. Yet no one will speak about it publicly or with one another for fear of persecution and confinement by the mental health field, the tool of the deep state. The conscientious entity I have been touching down on. So let us dig into what things you as an average person have been subjected to. That has ultimately misled and deceived you to believe things contrary to reality, but which has made you delusional. The great delusion is what this is referred to in the Bible, as the Bible has fulfilled. The very first thing is pop culture. In our society, anything that has been different is considered to be one, a mental illness, two, a disability, three, we strange, wrong. Someone who has a speech impediment is considered abnormal, yet there are 7.5 million U.S. citizens who have speech impediments. I don't think the problem makes the individual different from you or I. There are 43.5 million U.S. citizens that are dyslexic. Yet society views them as different than to have a disability. I don't believe 43.5 million U.S. citizens with dyslexia are any different or indifferent from you or I. 2.3 million U.S. citizens have been diagnosed with bipolar mood swings. Tell me you have a show of seeing this, as 2.3 million people in the U.S. with bipolar mean they have a disability or any different from you or I. Did it ever occur to you that each and every person with bipolar disorder has those mood swings for a very good reason? 6.1 million children in the U.S. are diagnosed with ADHD. Did it ever occur to you that these children are hyper and out of focus in their school work because they have been excluded from extracurricular activities to burn their excess energy? Sitting at home with no exercise, eating fast food. Or maybe they're acting out because of a folding loss when a fat stair for divorce and they're not getting proper attention, soothing that they need. I don't think that 6.1 million children labeled with ADHD are disabled. I blame the parents for not providing their kids with what they need. And I blame them also for going along with the false notions of society imposed upon them from schools and mental health personnel. To believe what is told to you as a parent by another person no matter their status without doing your research or thinking for yourself makes you liable as a parent. And when you listen to this nonsense and give your children mind-watering drugs medicine, which fucks with their head and irreparably messes with the natural and proper chemical excretion and balance in their brains when nothing is really wrong with them. 2.6 million U.S. citizens have been labeled with schizophrenia. Labeled differently because they hear, see, smell, feel, or believe in something real that you choose not to or are unable to believe this false because you are spiritually unenlightened, uneducated, thin with it. And see with your eyes and not your mind the truth of God. Let us move on to school, college now. In college ethics and morals class teaches us that ethics is the difference between right and wrong, while morals are an individual person's perception on the difference between right and wrong. This is nonsense. It is a lie. It is wrong. These teachings are taught by atheists who do not believe in God, who was taught and created by atheistic democrats of the Unicrite of Freemasonry, the Illuminati. Morals, according to the Bible, is the difference between right and wrong, which are the do's and don'ts commanded by God in religious scriptures. Ethics, on the other hand, are laws and forms that have been created by man based on a consensus to replace morals. Morals are thus not an individualistic notion between right and wrong, it is the difference between right and wrong that man is attempting to replace with something contrary. Thus misleading and deceiving society is foretold in biblical scripture. Let us move on to anthropology now. Anthropology.
technology has been an idea for hundreds of years in our U.S. history, and the love world of fire. Darwinism was included into the teachings of anthropology. Anthropology is the study of human societies and cultures and the development, the study of human biological and physiological characteristics and their evolution. College anthropology courses teach young and well-minded students who have never thought for themselves. The brain stops growing and developing between the ages of 25 and 30. Most college students are 17 to 20 years of age. That Adam and Eve is a myth, and that the human race developed from apes, which developed from microorganisms. It explores the difference between religious creation. It uses Darwinism to attempt to prove God's creation as false. The same Darwinistic teachings were taught widespread in greater schools, junior highs, and high schools across the nation for many years, until illegalized in a lot of states. Some states still teach these false notions. Let me tell you how uneducated Charles Darwin was, and how ignorant and misleading Darwinism is. In ancient Sumerian mythology, as well as Greek Roman, and even Islamic, the Quran sources all tell us what actually happened, these documents having been around since the beginning of time. Explain that humans and animals interbred, God have changed the human DNA so interbreeding reproduction would no longer occur. And each of these ancient scriptures tells us that God placed a curse on certain peoples, turning them into apes, what we in the Ku Klux Klan call the Black Curse. The scientific evidence on real mermaids also proved that mer people were once human. The Yeti, the abominable snowman, Bigfoot, Elcha, Picabra, etc., etc., are all perfect examples of the offspring of these apes that were once men. There are also real historical documents that prove that these men that turned to apes even bred with humans. Humans did not come from apes. The ancient religious scriptures from various sources around the world tell us it was the opposite. Darwinism and anthropology are just another tool. Tactic the enemy organization uses to mislead prestige and miseducate young and gullible minds in schools. Let us move on to LGBT now. The LGBT curriculums were mandated to be taught in all Illinois schools by our Jewish governor Pritzker two years ago. If your children are in public school, they are now learning that homosexuality is good and okay, not even to mention that their homosexuality week and homosexuality month now that are nationally, federally recognized holidays. Let me tell you why this is wrong. I don't need the Bible on this one, although the Bible is clear. What we have here according to the U.S. Census Bureau is a dramatic decline in human reproduction every time they take a census report. Why do you think human reproduction in the U.S. is slowing and statistically projected to decline the U.S. population every few years? More and more people are failing to reproduce more than two children, and a lot not producing at all, and this is primarily the result of homosexuality in our country. Let me tell you uneducated average shows something because I'm a pompous piece of shit that knows better than you. What do you think is going to happen over the next 20 years? Do you not know the definition of genocide? Where is your mind and brains a shit fuck? But a wise enough society calls if your brains aren't in your head, they'll be on the floor with the coming war, as foretold in chapter 19 of the book of Revelation, which is currently in process, and no one will stop the will of God. When I lived in Juliet for two years as a JJC student, I witnessed the Juliet Public Library putting obscene homosexuality books on the first floor where children see them. I explained to them that I respect all education, including ones I disagree with, and asked them to move the materials out of the first floor to the second or third floor so kids wouldn't see them. They declined and then followed by placing kids' versions 
books in the fifth section of homosexuality on the first floor. Disneyland Furby King and spite of all publicly advertised homosexuality themes where innocent minds of children can see them. I think the most fucked up thing here is that sexual sin is perhaps the most imposing for ignoring someone to do something immoral than anything else, as in psychology. Sex is a primary motivator for human function and activity in everyday things, and the same gender is an attraction to most people. When we watch porn, when we fantasize, when we talk to our spouses and mates. 90% of the world's monuments were constructed to replicate the phallus or other sexual parts of man woman. God crafted Adam with his hands, including his phallus, sorry Adam. Needs to be said. The fact on same-sex encounters goes beyond the artistic, even worse to marry the same gender and disgrace God in failing to reproduce and follow God's commands in religious scriptures. Let's talk about condoms. In the Bible, God grew angry with Odin when he ejaculated on the ground after pulling his phallus out of the woman's vagina. God slew Odin for spilling his seed onto the ground instead of into his deceased brother's wife's vagina. Genesis chapter 38 verse 9. What condoms do is it prevents sperm from entering a woman's vagina and getting her pregnant. This results in declination of sexual reproduction. And this obeys God's commands in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 and Gen 9 to 7, as well as Genesis chapter 38 verse 9. The media. Did you know that every media outlet is owned by another organization? And at the top of the owning entity are leaders that the York Wright Masons Illuminati, that the capital of this is the Jewish family-owned business Goldman Sachs. Every news media will show you events other than what you need to see and learn to distract you from what is really going on in the world with religious prophecy. These medias are politically swayed in opposition of God and prophecy. They tell you misleading things, like Arminism, distractions from the real issues in society, and present truths of inaccurate history, believe me. I know a lot about history having Grandpa Norm, Norman Owens, who taught high school history at Watsaka High, and also my Grandma Louie to mistake his lead. And deceive you all from the truth. Let's talk about some of these false teachings in the next post. Let us continue from the end of the last post, where I referenced the misteaching and deception of history in schools. Pedagogy has been widely misused in public schools since the founding of our so-called great country. To misuse pedagogy and misteach and deceive young innocent children to believe false history is perhaps one of the most heinous things that can be done to a child. It rivals that of pedophilia. How many of you remember going to grade school? We got on the bus, we went to school, we heard the bell ring, and we'd stand up, place our right hand over our heart, look at the U.S. flag, and sing, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. With liberty and justice for all, then we would sing a follow-up children's song like Yankee Doodle or something. Let us talk about the Pledge of Allegiance. This pledge, as a child, had little to no meaning on any of us great school children on a conscious level. We sang it, it was fun, we didn't know the meaning, and we didn't know what it did in our subconscious minds. It was illegalized for different reasons later, but our generation now has it ingrained in our subconscious minds, the same generation that will fill society up until the second coming. What we call the end times, the time of war, plagues, tribulation, deception, delusion, etc., etc. Subconsciously, we are brainwashed to believe that we support the United States and all it stands for. We are made robots to believe the wide support the U.S. All that stands for including false histories taught to us in school, which we will get to shortly, and it works. Because it was 
was our habitat pledge forced upon all of us when we didn't have the mind to think for ourselves, or the time or space to do so. Thus, this pledge was nothing but a pedagogical brainwashing technique to prepare each U.S. citizen to support, abide by, and follow each and everything that we as children were subjected to. And would forever be subjected to in the future, including media outlets, false history teachings in school, political views, religious views. Or shall I better state the vacancy and avoidance of religious views got? In grade school and junior high, we are not taught about our prehistory of our nation, we are first taught about the structure and formation of our country. About the 13 colonies, the founding fathers, and that Christopher Columbus discovered America. We are taught that the U.S. and Indians were friends. We were not taught why the nation was founded or why the expedition was launched to the Americas. How Christopher Columbus knew where he was going or why we declared independence. Then we learn about the Underground Railroad, Martin Luther King Jr., the Emancipation Proclamation, the freeing of the slaves, if we are not told why they were enslaved. What happened to society when they were freed, or what organizations the Founding Fathers were associated with that need for these things, events, decisions. And in greater school and junior high, we learn about the American Civil War. We are taught that it started because the blacks were free, but the South didn't like that because they needed workers of little to no cost for plantation and industrialization. Teachers have been terminated from employment for speaking the true history time and time again, and the vast majority of us were taught the one-sided coin of history in this matter. That the U.S. is right, and that the Confederate States of America was wrong, that the U.S. is good, and that the Confederacy is bad. Schools are prohibited from teaching the post-history of the Civil War due to references to the Ku Klux Klan, but later legalized there in school, along with making references to Christianity. Christ thought this also occurred as a war in the courtroom, prohibiting the use of the Bible in reading scripture or having to place your hand on the Bible before giving testimony. The teachings of the Civil War, that the U.S. is right and good, and that the CSA is wrong and bad, involuntarily results in the implied teachings to students that the Ku Klux Klan is bad and wrong. Let us learn the true history of all these things that the schools left out did not teach us or taught us as a subjective U.S. standpoint rather than objective. Let us begin from the beginning. Before the U.S. was founded, in Genesis chapter 28 verse 14 and Jane 11 to 7 explain how the inhabitants of the motherland were spread out across the earth and separated. Our nation came from England, where the Freemasonic Grand Lodge is established. England was a territory of the Roman Catholic Church at the time. There were many Englishmen who wanted to reform the laws, notions, and laws of England, in other words, remove or change from a monarchy to be free from religious requirements. Eradicate Christianity and God. This expedition was led by the Freemasons. Christopher Columbus was an identified Freemason. When he voyaged to the U.S., he did not do so blindly. This is proven by the fact he came with an army armed for warfare and knew where he was going prior to setting sail. There is only one way he knew this, and that is by having a guide. There is only one guide possible, which was the logbook of Neef Erikson. Neef Erikson was a Norse explorer, what you might call a Viking. He landed in the Americas 1001 AD with several Norsemen. Around the 900s to the 1050s, the Norsemen were mostly Christianized. Historical records prove that the Roman Catholic Church and the Norsemen had physical conflicts throughout history. This primarily comes with the Christianization throughout the world by the LCC. Uh, the Irish saved civilization, but 
joy up from food, so exclusive research came to an outfit as a deep out hundreds of these underground bunkers worldwide. One must then ask the true meaning of the emancipation proclamation. Why? Why enslave blacks? Then divide them into segregation and free them. According to woman Illuminati Nika, it was so they study interbreed with non-blacks, so genocide occurs to the black race. So I ask you, who is the true enemy here? The godless anti-Christian organization, the dual right of Freemasonry, the Illuminati, or the Ku Klux Klan, who preach a gospel of love for all people. Contrary and our fall of gods were in Genesis chapter 28, verse 14, and Gen 11 to 7 where each people can live happy in peace amongst their own people and preserve each of God's races, creations, instead of destroying them by genocide. The Confederate States of America fought against these immoral things, and the Ku Klux Klan continued and still continues to fight back against all this immorality. These are the true facts and the true history. The history you were not taught, the history you were taught was wrong, the history you were taught is bad. According to the U.S. Census Bureau and FBI statistics, 98% of U.S. crime is caused by blacks. Blacks make up about 17% of the U.S. population. The U.S. population is 329,500,000, including children and infants. There are 398.5 criminals for every 100,000 U.S. citizens in our country. This means that there are 1,313,057.5 criminals in our country. 98% of those criminals are black. 1,286,796.35 blacks are criminals out of 56 million.
based on skin color. It is a war based on the difference between right and wrong, between Christianity and the deep state. I would advise you to get educated, because a person's color does not matter in this war. You will reach heaven if you are good. And you will find hell if you are bad. That is the bottom line. To save you from making the wrong choices is why we are talking about the difference between right and wrong, between truths and lies, between reality and delusion. The delusion you hold in your mind by means of mistitching, deception, black air, realism, false and misleading media, the